Okay, this is part two in the tutorial on very basic motion tracking in Blender. I'm using Blender 2.63, and just uh, to start off, make sure your dimensions over here match your video, so frame rate and the resolution. If you set that to your video that you're importing, it's going to make things a little bit easier later on down the road, so just do that. We've got our default scene here. I'm going to do, real quick, I'm going to delete this cube because we're not going to need it. Zero on the, or sorry, one on the number pad will move us to front view. Control Alt Zero on the number pad should move the camera to that view. And uh, in this particular case, I'm not going to be using the lighting, so I'll just delete that to get it out of the way. But that may uh, vary on your project whether you're going to use that lighting or not. Um, next, I'm just going to change this view to a movie clip editor. I'm going to open a clip. I'm going to go to where I have some clips saved. Switch this to icon view and scroll way down because way down towards the bottom there should be a video of me here. Open that. And if we uh, shuffle through this, um, you can see that uh, it's just me with a piece of paper and I drew four little markers on the piece of paper. And those are the markers we're going to track. Um, default project's 250 frames a second, or 250 frames total. Uh, I'm going to cut this off. It looks like. Uh, 350 frames would probably be good. So I'll set my project to 350 frames. Shift left arrow will bring us back to the front first frame. I'll scroll in here and uh, once again this is the second tutorial. I hope that you watch the first tutorial because this next part uh, is basically what we did in the first tutorial so I'm going to go through it kind of fast. But we're going to set some markers. I'm going to scale them up using S, G to grab and move them. Uh, and I'm going to set four of them. Now we can track them individually, just like in the first tutorial we just tracked one. What I'm going to do once I have all four of these uh, set in place, I'm going to hit A twice or however many times you need to select everything. First time you hit A we'll probably deselect everything, hit a second time we'll select everything. And at this point I'm going to try to track all four, although I'm pretty sure we're probably going to lose uh, at least two of them at some point, maybe three. I uh, already lost that first one at the bottom left there no problem we'll go back and uh, track the rest of it later on lost the second one there and that's where I thought that I would probably lose some but we still have two of them so luckily um, we only have two to go back and retract so selecting this one scrolling back here right here is where we lost it you can use your arrow keys left and right to find that last little frame G to grab it and just reposition it slightly and press this play button again. Should start tracking it again. Lost it again. That's basically because when I turn the paper towards the camera like that, our circles kind of become elliptical shape, and so they're no longer circles, so the tracker loses them. And when we came out of it, we lost it again. So we will reposition that, and I think we'll be good on that one till the end. Oh, no, we're not. We lost it again. Still much better than <laughs> doing each one of these frames by hand. Okay. Now we're going to go back and find where that one lost tracking, which was pretty much right off the bat. Yeah, right there. So right here, I'm going to grab, just reposition it, and press play. We will probably lose it again when I turn the paper towards the camera right here. Okay. So just grab it, reposition it, and press play. Probably lose it again when we come out here. And hopefully we'll be good till the end once all the way to frame 350. And if so, good. Okay. So, once again, just like in the last tutorial, we're going to split this view, set it to a 3D view, which is our view here. I'm going to hit T to remove that tab, or that uh, panel on the left there. Remember, the cursor has to be over this frame when you hit T to remove that. And um, basically, I'm going to hover over here, hit A till all these are selected tab to go into edit mode on our little trackers here and now I'm going to say link empty to tracker or to track. Click that and we've got four empties. We can also at this point set the background uh, set as background so we move that image over here and we will join these two windows and if I hit alt A now in here you can see that our empties are following our little dots that we were tracking pretty perfectly. Okay escape to get out of the animation there. Shift left arrow to go back to the first frame. And at this point we're going to import uh, I'm going to import a still image but you can do a video whatever you'd like. Uh, 
into a flat plane. So I'm going to hit spacebar, I'm going to type in plane, and once again I'm going to use the the add-on which is called import images as plane, built in by default, not enabled by default. It's under user preferences add-ons. Um, if you don't know how to do that, once again, you need to go back and learn the basics of Blender. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to just find an image here, a uh, fun image. How about this great one of my wife right here? Uh, we'll do this one here. I'm going to say huge shadeless. Uh, alpha is not important. Pre-multiply. Once again, these options, normally you probably wouldn't do shadeless because you'd want to match the, the lighting of your project or your original video. I'm not worried about that in this case. I'm going to hit RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees. Now at this point, it's very important. One, uh, what we're going to be doing is hooking each one of these vertices to each one of these empties, but it's also very important that they're lined up perfectly because if you try to eyeball it, which I tried when I first started doing this, um, it's not going. It's going to not look right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select one of these empties, shift select our plane tab, select the vertice I want, and at this oh I skipped a step. Sorry, get out of edit mode. Select the empty, and then we're going to say uh, Shift S, and we're going to move our cursor to selected. So now our 3D cursor is right centered on that empty. There might be an easier way to do this. This is how I figured out how to do this. I kind of made this up myself here. Um, so uh, sh after the cursor is centered on the empty, select the empty, Shift Select the plane tab, select the vertice, and then Shift S, and we're going to say our selection to the cursor. Now it's lined up perfectly and now we're going to link that vertice to the empty so that it follows it. So at this point we're going to hit control H and we're going to say hook to selected object. So tab to get out of edit mode and if I press alt A to play now you can see that that uh, vertice is tracking that empty. Perfect. We just have to do that little process in this case four more times escape so select this empty uh, shift s cursor to selected then shift select tab select this vertice control h uh, hook to object oh no I'm sorry yeah I don't think it matters what order we'll do shift s again uh, s um, selected to cursor okay uh, so it doesn't matter what order you do those two things uh, so now select this empty, shift S, cursor to selected, shift select, tab, select this vertice, shift S, uh, selection to cursor, control H, and hook object to selected. Now I will show you something that I do by accident all the time when I'm doing this. So uh, select that, shift S, cursor to selected, shift, uh, select this, tab, select this and now there have been times where um, selection the cursor instead of hitting control H to hook it I hit shift H which hides that object just hit control Z to undo that if you hit shift H instead of control H and hook to select an object okay so now we can alt A and you can see the animation we can put this into textured mode and you can see the picture of my wife is right there and I mean besides uh, really touching it up probably mostly in the compositor to match uh, our scene uh, we're doing good but once again just like in the first tutorial if we hit F12 to render you get that image but you don't get the background because we need to go into the compositor now we're going to go compositing uh, use nodes uh, automatic render uh, we're going to render our 3d view here uh, Shift A, another input would be movie clip. And uh, don't click open, click the little uh, film strip here because we've already imported the video. Boom, there it is. And then we'll go uh, Shift A, sh yeah, Shift A, <laughs> um, color. And once again, depending on how you're going to mix this, you might want to go to mix. In this case, I'm just going to do an alpha over. So select that. And what we're going to do is uh, the background image to the top yellow, the 3D render to the bottom yellow and then the alpha to this frac input connect that to the render there and if we scroll out you can see it there 
So uh, now we just need to sa save it as a video or render it as a video. So we'll say, I like using XVID. I'm going to do XVID in code, uh, preset XVID, and I'll just save it as track tracking 2avi I will click animate it will create that AVI for me which I will play here in a moment and um, I just like to ask you to visit my site filmsbychris.com that's Chris with a K should be a link in the description hope you enjoyed this tutorial the one before it there'll be others coming in this series soon um, so check out the description for details and all that if you have any questions feel free to visit uh, my website and click on the help which will bring you to our IRC channel which is uh, pound films by Chris on the free node server um, much better chance of getting your questions answered if you go to the IRC channel rather than putting it in the comments on the YouTube video because good chance they won't get answered there um, that's it if you like my tutorials visit my site there's a donate button I would love your support and uh, as always, have a great day, and here is our final render.